Wow, time is over, life is on. Um, it hit me, uh, I was a little bit late. So, welcome to my first authentic, real, from my heart coming water wall show live. Um, it looks like there's nobody watching me right now so but this is going to be recorded and I hope that in the future um, there will be some of you brave water wall builders joining me live here because then you have the opportunity to um, ask me for help if you have a water wall or what a feature project and I would show you and I would support you live too and you would also have the opportunity to share your project um, here with the audience so um, yeah as nobody's watching but just let me take a look because maybe uh, somebody's watching and I'm just wrong informed so I will take a look at my browser blah, blah, blah. and I'm just wrong informed yeah so until now uh, nobody is here but I I can see if somebody's joining so the first topic I want to share with you today is about um, the Cape rule so when you're planning or building a water feature um, it is important that you take care of those four points which we have um, summed or uh, um, uh, put together in the Cape Rule. I want to show you what a Cape Rule is. It is about the four major uh, issues you might face when you run your water wall and now just let me show you the other screen yeah here we go so what I will do I will make myself a little bit smaller and so now I can explain you the cape rule well cape obviously is um, 
created by the first uh, letters of those words. The first important part you should take care of is calcification. So if you use um, ordinary regular tape water which is um, calcareous, your water feature is going to look very ugly after a short period of time. So um, to avoid those problems I would recommend to use uh, lime-free water which is um, distilled water which you can buy in a tool market or you can use uh, reverse osmosis which will also produce lime-free water for for your water feature. So this is an important thing you should um, take care and avoid by using lime-free water or you use you can use a water additive which will um, remove the lime from the water. Uh, the second important part are alg algaes and germs which can make your water feature pretty ugly and also a little bit dangerous uh, in terms of health if you don't take care uh, if you don't take care of it. So um, algae are common known. Uh, they will appear uh, after a few weeks when you run your water feature. I've had customers with no algae problems at all but I think it's good if you prevent it from the beginning by using a water additive and uh, maybe the, the algaes are not so dangerous, but what could be dangerous is if you get germs in your uh, in the water of your water feature, because um, this could affect the health. Then the third um, thing you should take care of is pollution. The good thing about your water feature is it clean it cleanses the air it's like a magnet for all for all the flying pollution in the air the bad news is that all the dirt which is removed from the air including for example um, dust or smoke and also smells everything will remain in the water so uh, your the water of your water feature is going to get dirty and this is why you should plan a good and proper water filtering which will remove um, the organic and uh, and 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 uh, mechan mechanic uh, dirt which is inside the water feature and um, the last point uh, you should consider is the evaporation so what we say is if you have a water wall uh, with a surface of one square meter you can expect an evaporation of estimately three to five liters per day if you're running the water feature 24 hours so if you have a water feature with a, which is uh, two meters high and uh, one meter wide which is two square meters uh, and you run it 24 hours uh, a day then probably you will uh, it will evaporate like uh, up to 10 liters into the air this is good because many people suffer from dry air so this would uh, be a benefit but you have to take care of the water level inside your system because if you lose if your water feature loses so much water it will be that um, when the water level sinks below the pump itself the pump will uh, get air and then the pump is going to uh, get broken because it's not transporting uh, water anymore but air and then it gets hot and then it uh, it gets broken so those four um, uh, things you should take care when 
uh, you, sh you should plan and take care of when you run and uh, plan a water feature. You can uh, treat all those four challenges uh, manually, uh, but this could be, well, a little bit of a work because imagine if you have to refill your water feature every day with 20 liters. So uh, if you have a bigger water feature or a water wall, which is our special topic here, uh, I would recommend to do uh, the refilling, for example, automatically. I would also recommend to do the uh, decalcification automatically by installing a reverse os osmosis in front of the automatic refilling system so that your water feature is only filled with lime-free water, so you will never have problems with um, calcification or lime. Uh, then I would recommend to use a metering unit which will add a water additive regularly to the water to protect your water from algae and germs. Um, and this metering unit also um, is only to be refilled maybe every two or three months, so you're really hands off. And regarding the pollution, I would recommend to install a filter. There are many filters in the um, uh, aquarium uh, industry uh, which you can use, but there are also other filters uh, which will remove the organic dirt from the water and so your the water of your water feature stays clean. Um, okay, so yeah, those four points. This is the Cape Rule I wanted to show you today. I can see that there is one um, uh, user watching watching me right now. So if you have a question, please feel free to um, uh, write it down in the chat. So uh, I would be glad if I could help you. And uh, if not, I will just go on because I have some nice things to show you. Um, for example, a uh, water wall which I have photographed at a airport and this is a pretty nice example where um, I can show you the topics, the Cape Rule, with which we've just uh, uh, discussed. So here you can see a water feature which is actually pretty cool because you have this free falling area here um, and I think it's also very good for the surrounding climate uh, uh, but I can tell you it's very loud so uh, it's nice to look at but believe me if water falls that high it gets very loud so because especially if water falls straight on water it gets very loud and uh, there is um, already some pollution in this water feature so and that's a pity and you know if you have a water feature then actually it's 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 an eye catcher and it's made to be watched uh, the sad thing is if you don't take care of the cape rule uh, a very a very pretty water feature can get uh, pretty ugly uh, as you can see in this example uh, so let me just show you what I'm talking about um, you can see it here there already some there's already some dirt which uh, makes it <laughs> a little bit ugly and uh, you can see the dirt here too and that's a pity so I think that the guys who have built this water feature uh, yeah they didn't know about the cape rule because uh, if you don't have a proper filter system all the dirt and all the lime and uh, um, is going to 
uh, stick to the glass and if you have corners and edges and holes um, and niches then uh, it will stay there so it's really important to have a proper dirt filtering and it's important to avoid calcification and lime and it, it is important to um, uh, uh, take care of all geese and germs and uh, another uh, point here well no this is where this is explaining everything so if you take care in before you build a water feature of those four points your water feature is going to stay attractive even uh, after a period of time and it's not going to get ugly because I believe that 80% of the water features today um, are born out of a great vision and with and are built with great excitement because uh, almost everybody loves to watch floating water but I'm afraid 80% of those water features uh, they don't work after uh, maybe three months maybe they're they will make problems a little bit earlier uh, this this could be like um, as I said the problem of calcification or of dirt but there are also some serious problems which can appear if you don't plan it properly so uh, for example your pump uh, can be damaged or if you use the wrong pump then um, uh, your water feature is going to be too loud so you will hear the pump sounding all the time which is also reducing the effect of enjoying the nice um, water flow okay so um, yeah I I believe that it is like that and only the pros who have made some water walls they don't make so many mistakes anymore but uh, the problem with my colleagues is that we don't exchange so many know-how yet and this is why I've created the Wawadzen water wall school and this is why I'm giving away uh, so much know-how uh, about how to build a water wall uh, because yeah I think that uh, uh, you can avoid a lot of uh, problems by uh, if you use the know-how which I provide and which I'm also collecting because I want to um, connect myself and I want to collab collaborate with other water wall builders maybe with builders like you watching me right now or maybe you're just starting this and you're excited because you've seen it and you told yourself you can do that actually I'm pretty sure you can do that um, but I'm not so sure if you can do it um, in a secure and relaxed way so uh, I confess that I have had many sleepless nights and uh, many frustrations during the let's say 150 water feature projects which I have um, realized um, because yeah I didn't follow some basic uh, some basic rules and uh, the first very important rule is which actually one customer uh, taught me is planning so if you if you think you can build a water wall just yeah just I don't know how to say it, uh, but uh, just by out of the head and just start it. Uh, okay, you might have luck, but um, one minute planning saves ten minute execution. That's really true. And uh, I've spent so many hours, lost hours with stuff and work which I could have avoided, and I I also could have avoided the costs. Uh, if I would have had a more mindful planning so um, if you're in the water feature business <coughs> and you would like to be more successful uh, or if you want to avoid uh, frustration the first th thing you should do is increase the time you spend with planning and this includes uh, a proper time planning and it includes 
detailed drawings so you really know what is uh, fitting and what is not fitting together and um, and so on but I don't want to go too deep inside the topic of planning um, we are covering the topic of planning in our free basic course so if you are um, watching this please after the show uh, visit our website vavazen.net uh, we have a free free course there um, so let me show you the Vavazen water wall school where is it uh, here it is Um, if you visit our website then if you scroll down you will find this green button and you can subscribe you just enter your email and uh, then you will get a confirmation email which according to the GDPR uh, we need you to confirm your email and allow us to send you uh, further emails and after you have logged in you will be uh, then we will send you the login data and after you have logged in you will be redirected to the dashboard and on the dashboard you can you see here the basic course and um, as I said it's free all you need to do is yeah you give us your email and uh, but uh, if you don't want to get any emails for the emails from us we will stop this automatically you you can unsubscribe at the bottom of each email we send you at every time and but you if you stay in our um, uh, list uh, you will be also notified about our next uh, live shows or about our special offers and um, also in these live shows um, you can as I said show your project and um, if you share your project uh, I would be glad to support your project so for example if you're planning a water feature and uh, you join this show and uh, you're willing to share your sketches and uh, or maybe your challenges or your problems uh, then I would uh, uh, help you and support you uh, with plans pictures maybe videos uh, to uh, solve your problems or to um, yeah uh, make your water feature a success and not a frustration and this is going to be everything is going to be f for free uh, only thing is you should be willing to yeah share your project here live on uh, this channel okay so uh, this is um, the free basic course which you can um, uh, take if you subscribe and then there's maybe uh, two interesting things I wanted to show you too which um, many water feature builders don't think about and it's um, the color of the surface you are uh, running the water on and uh, we've had a customer in a bank uh, who asked asked us for a orange glass water wall and we did that but it's really disappointing because uh, you almost can't see anything of the water uh, let me show you that so this is from a little bit far away the problem is that as the surface or let's say as the background um, behind the water film or yeah behind the water is uh, reflecting too much light um, it makes the water waves almost invisible and it's really dramatic you know because uh, <laughs> you're building a water wall to enjoy watching the water and uh, in this case it's well uh, it's sad because of at um, let's say 80% um, 
of the angles from where you watch this water wall you won't see you won't see the water um, and I think I also have a video here yeah so uh, you can s you can see it's almost not recognizable that there's water flowing over this surface okay now you can see a little bit but you know um, <laughs> it's really like only 20% of what is possible and if you're standing in front of it you also you, you as you can see it's, you only see that the water here and here but the rest of the surface um, <laughs> is absorbing the waves so uh, yeah <laughs> never use a colored glass which is um, yeah shining from itself well it's not shining and we also we don't we don't have light behind it if there would be some illumination from behind that colored glass it would be even worse so uh, but as as it is a half transparent glass um, it is somehow glowing or illuminating or reflecting the light which is um, uh, around and that makes this yeah uh, and this is just ruining the effect so if, if you want to create an eye catcher don't use color glass and to show you the um, to show you the uh, opposite effect is if you use a mirror as a um, surface for example here um, if you use a mirror I think this is the most powerful um, surface to run water on because the light is yeah is reflected like two times on the waves of the water and really it's like from 90 or 95 percent of the angles from where you watch the water wall you will always see and enjoy the waves of the water so uh, I think that uh, yes y you can really say like the most um, effective way or powerful way to um, present water on a surface is a mirror but also uh, a transparent glass like for example here um, will um, show the waves very good because uh, you have um, you, you don't have a background which is uh, absorbing the light so but this is only if you have a glass plate in the middle of a room uh, if you have a glass plate in um, in front of a white wall then we have again the effect that you cannot see um, the uh, water as nice as it should be so just let me take a look if I can show you this uh, uh, effect if you are running a water wall in front of uh, a white wall because we've done this in a hotel too and um, yeah here so well this is a good angle because I've ch I have chosen this angle to make this photo um, but if you watch the same uh, water wall from the front so maybe I can show you a picture where where you can see that uh, uh, that the white background is yeah uh, not so good I'm afraid I don't have any pictures anymore but uh, yeah just please believe me uh, don't use a white wall uh, behind a transparent glass water wall uh, make the background darker darker use maybe a black color or a blue color or even a green color and this will um, 
make the water much much more visible from more angles okay so uh yeah that's actually almost the end of my first english live water show um as expected well there are not so many people watching right now so maybe you will watch this recording if you're watching this recording um please visit our website uh bavadzen.net and subscribe so you get access to our free course and you will also be informed about our next live show uh in which hopefully um i will have some guests and uh, those guests well it's not hopefully i will have guests and those guests this might be other brave guys uh, or women who are brave enough to build a water feature because it's really you have to be brave if you are building a water feature uh, because there's many things that can go wrong um, but also there is a big great reward yeah and um, I think being brave is a good thing uh, but being mindful is also good so mindful braveness is maybe a good combination if you want to build water features and I would be glad to support you and as I said uh, I would be glad to see you in this live show as a guest if you present your uh, project and uh, um, also we're going to have some guests uh, who are experts in different areas of water feature building and if you are an expert uh, please feel uh, feel invited and welcome in the show I would like to support you also uh, yeah that's it so thank you for watching um, I will just give you a nice um, a nice video at the end and uh, also oh thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you okay bye bye and see you Ha 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 